One of the questions I get asked most about the Mediterranean diet is, what the heck do I eat? Today, as I share with you a seven-day Mediterranean meal plan, you will learn what a Mediterranean diet is and what it isn't. Okay, you probably know that the Mediterranean diet is consistently rated as one of the healthiest diets in the world and that it's really, really good for heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. But it's also good for asthma, depression, anxiety, dementia, hypertension, Alzheimer's, liver disease, COPD, sleep apnea, stroke, plus many, many other diseases and issues. For more information about all the recipes that we're going to share today and anything else that we're going to share within this video, check out the description box below for links to our website, MediterraneanLiving.com. So before we go to the actual seven day meal plan, I just wanna tell you a little bit about the Mediterranean diet. So as I said before, the Mediterranean diet is rated as one of the healthiest diets in the world. As a matter of fact, US News and World Report rated it the healthiest diet uh, in the world for the last five years. So what is the Mediterranean diet? Very simply, the Mediterranean diet is the food and cuisines of the countries and islands around and on the Mediterranean Sea. The recipes vary tremendously from country to country and even from house to house. But here are the basic guidelines of the Mediterranean diet, just real quick. So, the, first of all, the majority of food is unprocessed food. So a lot of times if you're not eating well, you're eating a lot of highly processed foods. But in the Mediterranean, most of the food is whole foods and it's mostly plant-based foods, usually organic, uh, often grass-fed. So just the food itself is much healthier for you. The next guideline is that fruits and vegetables are eaten in huge quantities. So the average American eats about two and a half servings of fruits and vegetables a day. The average person in the Mediterranean eats nine to 15 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And you'll see as we're going through the meal plan, how many fruits and vegetables uh, are eaten just within the meals themselves. The next big thing about the Mediterranean diet is that the main protein are beans, nuts, and seeds. Whereas the main protein in America is meat and chicken, the main protein there is more of a plant-based uh, beans, nuts, and seeds. Another thing is that the Mediterranean diet is a super high fat diet. And uh, this is something that seems like it shouldn't be good for you, but it actually is good for you and can be shown by all the studies and all of the uh, diseases that it can help. And so it's a high fat diet, very high fat. Um, as a matter of fact, we uh, had somebody go into the mountains and interview people who were in their 90s like on the island of Crete, where some of the healthiest people in the world live. And there was a man there who was eating a cup of olive oil with every meal. Now I'm not gonna recommend that, but it is a high fat diet and the big fat is extra virgin olive oil, which is a monounsaturated fat. Most of the fat eaten in the Mediterranean is monounsaturated compared to saturated and polyunsaturated fats. Another big guideline of the Mediterranean diet is that they eat lots of omega-3 foods and omega-3 foods is good for your heart, good for inflammation, it comes from fish, it comes from uh, nuts and green leafy vegetables and other things that are eaten in the Mediterranean. So those are the real basics of the Mediterranean diet. For more information on actually how to start the Mediterranean diet, check out our other video called How to Start the Mediterranean Diet. Okay, here we go. Seven days of eating the Mediterranean diet. Let's begin with day one. And day one breakfast, shakshuka. Shakshuka is eggs stewed in tomatoes with herbs and spices and other delicious flavors. Now, here's the first thing that you'll learn about the Mediterranean diet from this meal plan is that they do eat eggs. A lot of people think eggs are bad for you. Uh, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, people we're all saying that you shouldn't eat eggs because it's gonna raise your cholesterol. Eggs do not raise your cholesterol and they are fine to eat. I mean, I wouldn't eat two or three a day necessarily, but they're definitely fine to eat throughout the week. Lunch on day one is a chop chop salad. This is a salad from Greece and it includes basically all the things that are in a Greek salad except that it's chopped up. Lettuce and feta and olives and peppers and tomatoes 
with a lemon dressing on top, lemon olive oil dressing, super delicious. You might have this with bread um, or with crackers, something like that, but that's it for lunch for that day. Uh, and you can see we've already had tomatoes for breakfast and vegetables for lunch. And so we've already had probably about four to five servings of vegetables already. Next is dinner, pasta alla putinesca with tuna. Now this is a delicious pasta recipe with uh, capers and olives and tuna. And, and the thing, this is something to learn here is that a lot of people think that you can't have pasta on the Mediterranean diet or, that you, or pasta is bad for you. Pasta is gonna make me gain weight. There's actually studies that show that pasta will actually help you lose weight. Pasta is something that has a lower glycemic index than things like bread and is generally not that bad for you. I mean, if you're eating just tons of pasta by itself, that I wouldn't recommend. But if you're eating a small amount of pasta with a side dish of salad or, or broccoli or some kind of vegetable and a really nice healthy sauce, perfect. So there is day one. Day two breakfast, full madames. So what is full madames? This is an Egyptian dish and it's basically beans uh, that you might have with eggs or you might just have it with bread. And you might be thinking to yourself, beans for breakfast? Well, again, Mediterranean, they eat differently. They're not gonna be eating Fruit Loops for breakfast, for example. They're gonna be eating a nice, healthy dish. Why not start your day with something healthy that you might have later in the day? If you like this video and you like what we're doing, click the subscribe button below and also hit the notification button. Day two lunch. Here's a surprise. Pasta a la putinesca with tuna and broccoli. Now, wait a second. Didn't we have that for dinner last night? Well, this is how you can easily do a Mediterranean meal plan and make it really work. You have something for dinner and then you have the leftovers the next day. This way you don't have to be constantly cooking and cooking and making every single meal and you know what you're gonna have and it's, you know that it's gonna be really delicious and just have the same thing that you had for dinner for lunch. This is what they do in the Mediterranean. So there's lunch. Now it's time for dinner, a white bean soup with Greek salad. So white bean soup comes from the Greek island of Crete and it is uh, one of the signature dishes of Greece. Beans, again, the top protein in the Mediterranean. And also, there, in this recipe, there's a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Now, here's another lesson. If you look at many Mediterranean recipes, like cookbooks or online, you're gonna see some, maybe one to two teaspoons or maybe tablespoons added but the real Mediterranean diet is swimming in olive oil. So in this recipe, there's a cup of olive oil. It does uh, serve like eight to 10 people, so you're not getting a whole cup per serving, but you're getting a lot. Day three of the Mediterranean meal plan, pan con tomate. Sure, I'm uh, mispronouncing that. I'm horrible with accents and languages. No, 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 let's break it down. I would like to buy a hamburger. You would like to buy Am Berger. This is the first Italian breakfast, and it's basically a super simple recipe where you're just pureeing tomatoes and garlic and olive oil and some spices, and you put it on a piece of toasted bread. So good, and I actually, when I first heard this about this recipe, I thought to myself, is that really gonna be that good? And when I tried it, I was just amazed at how delicious it was. Now, if you want some protein with it, you could put some mozzarella or feta cheese on it, something like that, but it's a really delicious breakfast on its own. Day three, lunch. I'm still hungry, what about you? Well, it's the white bean salad again with Greek salad. What we had for the night before. Super easy, all you gotta do is heat it up and you're done. Day three, dinner. Cameraman dropped his pen. He's been dropping oh things. Head. He's been dropping things all day. <laughs> day three dinner, Moroccan chicken with peppers, lemons, and olives. The thing to learn here is that you actually can eat chicken on the Mediterranean diet and maybe once a week have chicken. The thing to try to get when you're getting chicken is to try to get organic chicken. 
Um, a lot of the chicken that's out there that you're gonna get at the store is really low quality and has all kind of uh, like antibiotics and things that are not so good for you in it. So try to get an organic chicken. But that being said, uh, this dish is super delish for the last meal of day three. Day four of breakfast, blueberry overnight oats with Greek yogurt. Okay, let's be real here. Blueberry overnight oats might not be a traditional Mediterranean breakfast, but it has all the ingredients of a traditional Mediterranean breakfast. So therefore, it's good for me. This breakfast, as I said, has Greek yogurt in it. And the great thing about Greek yogurt is that it's high in protein. It's uh, low in any kind of chemicals, especially if you get a really good Greek yogurt, and it's high in probiotics. And probiotics are something that are really good for your gut, and it's something that people that eat the Mediterranean diet tend to have a high, a really good uh, gut microbiome bacteria. So this is why this is good to have as much Greek yogurt and other fermented foods. But for this breakfast, blueberry overnight oats with Greek yogurt. And the thing that's great about it is you make it the night before and you wake up and you've got it and you're ready to eat. So. One thing is if you're eating these breakfasts and by the time lunch arrives, you are, are super, super hungry and maybe even hangry, maybe you should have had a snack. So what do they have for snacks in the Mediterranean? Well, a lot of times they'll just have a piece of fruit. They might have nuts, they might have some cheese, hummus, super simple things that are really easy to bring with you to work or to school or wherever you go. And on this day, uh, if I was to have the overnight oats, I would probably want to have some more uh, food, like a snack. So I would probably have like a handful of nuts. Okay, now we're at lunch. Again, just the leftovers from the day before, the Moroccan chicken with lemons, olives, and whatever else is in there. <laughs> whatever else, peppers, peppers, lemons, and olives. Okay, day four dinner. Sheet pan baked eggplant parmesan with a simple salad. One of the things that a lot of people that start to eat the Mediterranean diet start to have an issue with, or maybe they don't really understand, is that they think they have to have chicken or fish or meat or beans at every single meal. But you don't even have to have protein at every meal as long as you get enough protein for the day. So this recipe, doesn't have a lot of protein in it. It has melted cheese on top of the eggplant Parmesan. And in the simple salad, you could put nuts um, or seeds, something that will give it some extra protein, but you don't have to worry about it as long as you've had enough protein for the rest of the day. Day five, breakfast. Greek omelet with zucchini and mint. Again, you're already getting your vegetables first thing in the morning, so you can see where if you're trying to get, let's say, nine fruits and vegetables in a day, you've already begun because you've got zucchini and the mint is a little bit of a vegetable, but definitely the zucchini. And if you want, you could have fruit on the side or you could have fruit for snacks. And then by the time we get to lunch, you've already had two to three servings. You've already beaten what the average American eats in a day. Day five lunch, we're having the sheet pan eggplant Parmesan again. Super yummy with a simple salad, or you can have bread, easy peasy. Day five dinner, Greek meatballs and lemon potatoes. What, meatballs and potatoes? Okay, here's another uh, thing that happens a lot. A lot of times people will tell me that they can't eat the Mediterranean diet because they love meat and potatoes. Meat or potatoes. Our 10 minutes are up. Okay, so you, it's not that you're gonna eat meat and potatoes all the time on the Mediterranean diet, but there's definitely meat and potatoes on the Mediterranean diet. And you can slowly work your way into the other dishes, but start with the meatballs and potatoes and a salad on the side or some kind of vegetable. And then you can try the things that have a little less meat. So they eat meat in the Mediterranean diet. They just tend to eat less. So something like spaghetti and meatballs, if you get it here in the US, you're gonna get like a pound of spaghetti, a pound of meatballs, and a little tiny salad. In Italy, they're gonna eat spaghetti, a small bowl of spaghetti, a little bit of meatballs, and a lot of vegetables around it. So that's the difference. For this meal, 
Greek meatballs and lemon potatoes. You can have a salad on the side, some kind of vegetable. Yummy. Don't forget that all the recipes we're talking about are in the link below. So feel free to try any of them and see if you like them. This is another thing about the Mediterranean diet. You don't have to like everything. Some people don't like olives. Some people don't want to eat meat. That's okay. Uh, just you can substitute, you can try different things. And there's, there's literally tens of thousands of Mediterranean diet recipes. So just find the things that work for you. Day six breakfast, avocado toast with smoked salmon, dill, and capers. The thing to learn here is about salmon and fatty fishes. So they don't necessarily eat tons of salmon in the Mediterranean, although they do now. But here, the fish that has the highest amount of omega-3s that we can get at the best price is salmon. And so it's best to try to eat fatty fishes, if you can, that are high in omega-3 fats. And these fats are really good for your heart, for inflammation, all kinds of things. And so it's really great, if you can, to get your omega-3s from fish because that's where you get the highest amounts. But you can also get it from nuts and seeds and uh, green leafy vegetables and things like flax oil and flaxseed. Day six, guess what? You get to eat meat again, twice in the same week. Day six, guess what? You get to eat meat again. You're gonna have the leftovers, Greek meatballs, lemon potatoes, sauteed greens. Oh yeah, what a great way to, uh, to enjoy your lunch and probably take a good nap afterwards. For dinner, we're gonna have baked summer vegetables. Now, wait a second. We already talked about this a little bit, but can we really eat a meal of only vegetables with no protein? Well, we did have meat for lunch, so yes, we can. But if you wanna add some protein to it, you can have something like whipped feta on bread or just some slices of cheese on bread, something like that, and you have yourself a delicious regular protein meal. Day seven is the simple day. This is a day when we're gonna just make simple recipes or eat leftovers. So for breakfast, we're going with a kind of a traditional Greek breakfast, which would be feta cheese, some bread, olives, uh, maybe some nuts, coffee, tea with some olive oil, not on the coffee and tea, but on like maybe the feta, put a little olive oil and oregano. You might have some vegetables like sliced tomatoes or sliced cucumber. And that's it, a simple Mediterranean breakfast that takes about five minutes to make. And for lunch, we're gonna have the baked vegetables with the whipped feta on bread or whatever it was that, that we're having with the baked vegetables. Again, easy peasy day, no problems. And finally for dinner, chances are, if you've made all this food throughout the week, you've got leftovers. So we're just gonna have whatever you want for leftovers for dinner on day seven. And that's it, seven days of eating the Mediterranean diet.